Prime Minister, you look to die for. die for? Is that good? Is that an expression? that Geoffrey will be making a resignation statement tomorrow after PMQs. Thank you, Charles. Now, if you don't mind, we girls are rather busy. Prime Minister, if you don't mind my say. What, dear? You must hold your head up and get lost in the rough. Like this? Doesn't tilt forward. Tilt. The Prime Minister does not tilt. to say how sorry I am about all this. Your resignation. Well, thank you, Michael. I, I know I don't need to wear myself, of course. Of course. The thing is, um, things being what they are now, um, I'm thinking of sending an open letter to my constituency supporting you in your resignation, Europe, um, cabinet government, and so forth. I see. Yes. Michael, I should say that my resignation is not intended... ...as a prelude to my standing for the leadership, if that's what you're wondering. God, no. Well, that remains my position at present as well. Indeed. Except... ...were I to stand, uh, I mean, were that eventuality to arise... ...could I... would I be able to count on your support? Were that to arise? Michael, I think my position is probably best left uncluttered by commitments of that kind. Of course. Of course. Although... Should I have any further message to convey at a later stage? Then I shall, of course, do so. Right. Yes, of course. Thank you, Jeffrey. What the fuck does that mean? Since I first went into bat 11 years ago, the score at your end has ticked over nicely. You are the 663rd Lord Mayor. At the Prime Minister's end, we are stuck on 49. <laughs> I am still at the crease, Though the bowling has been pretty hostile of late. And in case anyone doubted it, can I assure you, there will be no ducking the bouncers, no stonewalling, no playing for time. The bowling's going to get hit all round the ground. That's my style. <laughs> Former Foreign Secretary Sir Geoffrey Howe. 
The Prime Minister is travelling to the Commons as we speak. Sir Geoffrey served as her Foreign Secretary for six years. His resignation follows growing tension in the Cabinet over the divisive issue of Europe. I remind the House that a resignation statement is heard in silence and without interruption. Sir Geoffrey Hart. Mr. Speaker. Sir. A quarter of a century has passed since I last spoke from one of the back benches. Since then, the Prime Minister and I have enjoyed something like 700 meetings of Cabinet and Shadow Cabinet during the past 18 years. It was a pleasure to serve as my right honourable friend, Chancellor of the Exchequer, to share in the transformation of our industrial relations and to help launch our free market programme. It was a great honour to serve for six years as Foreign and Commonwealth Secretary. And therefore, the House might well feel that something more than simple matters of style would be necessary to rupture such a well-tried relationship. It was the late Lord Stockton, formerly Harold Macmillan, who first put the central point clearly. He saw it as essential then, as it is today, not to cut ourselves off from the realities of power. Not to retreat into a ghetto of sentimentality about our past and so diminish our own control of our own destiny in the future. The tragedy is, and it is for me personally, for my party, for our whole people, and for my right honorable friend herself, a very real tragedy, that the Prime Minister's perceived attitude towards Europe is running serious risks the future of our nation. I hope there is no monopoly on cricketing metaphors. It is rather like sending your opening batsman to the crease. Only for them to find, the moment the first balls are bowled, that their bats have been broken before the game by the team captain. <laughs> conflict of loyalty, of loyalty to my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, and of loyalty to what I perceive to be the true interests of the nation, has become all too great. I no longer believe it possible to resolve that conflict from within this government. That is why I have resigned. In doing so, I have done what I believe to be right for my party and for my country. The time has come for others to consider their own response to the tragic conflict of loyalties with which I have myself wrestled for perhaps too long. saying to me at conference once, for God's sake, Geoffrey, do something political. Well, 
I didn't think he had that in him. But he was never that sharp with the opposition. Shall we let him have it? No. No, don't attack what he said. Not now. It's much wiser just to express sadness and regret, I think. It's Hazel time. He must have put him up to this. All that business about others and their conflict of loyalties. And... He'll stand now. He has to. I still don't think he's got the balls. It's just... Loyalty? He talks of loyalty. Conflict of loyalty. What about loyalty to me? Not a flick. How could he? How could he do that? Patty Lawson slumped next to him like a sack of beetroot. <clears throat> Carol called, sent love. I hope people are not going to start rallying round as though any of this were to be taken seriously. Goodness me, we fought much bigger battles than this and won. Did Mark call? <clears throat> I expect he's busy, like the rest of us should be getting on with our jobs. What's the mood? What mood? The party. They know who I am, what I've done. Be careful, love. They sent blood. Bernard and Charles are waiting. These things are such a distraction. There's a lasagna in the fridge I've earmarked for tonight. Unless you're out. They sent blood. If there's any blood to be spilled, it will most certainly not be mine. They wouldn't dare. They'll crucify you! This is the Tory party, for God's sake. They're not going to let a woman run the show. Love, love, think about it. If you lose, that'll be it. You won't come back. The whole bank shoot gone. Kaput. <sighs> Chancellor, you said. That was always the goal. There's never been a woman Chancellor. But leader of the party, they'll take you to the bloody cleaners. Someone has got to stand. If no one else will, then I must. I don't have a choice. Of course you've got a choice, woman. No. We've all held back long enough. For Ted's sake, for unity, for the sake of the party. And for what? We've lost two elections in a year. The country's practically on its knees. Sod the country. I don't give a toss about the country or Ted bloody Heath. What about us? The family. Me. I retire next year, love. I don't know how much more of all this I can stand. I can't do this without you. I couldn't have done any of it without you. But I am going to stand. Christ, I need a drink. I thought it right to inform you personally. I feel that someone from my wing of the party should stand. If you must. You'll lose, of course. Yes? Ken! No, no, nothing important. Rather absurd, actually. Mm-hmm. 